Right then, hello. So we start another one of these vlogs from my bedroom very early in the morning. <laughs> uh, and today we're going to the London Coin Fair. Um, so I'm not really sure what to expect, to be honest with you. Um, just thought I'd vlog it and just see what happens, really. I know that some of the other guys, like Christopher and Laughter and all that lot are going. Uh, so I thought I might as well um, head along down and see, see what's going on. Um, so I'll take you along on the journey and uh, we'll see what happens. So I've got to drive to London and then I'm getting the tube train to Russell Square. I'm probably actually not going to go to Russell Square because I'm eating laughter on the Metropolitan Line <laughs> and we'll see uh, whether that actually works or not uh, but we might be walking. Um, so yeah, uh, I'll take you along on the journey with me and uh, hopefully you enjoy. So I'm in the car, let's get going. And I realise this is exactly the same format as I did with the Jersey vlog, but oh well, why not? <laughs> so uh, we'll be there in, I think, just about an hour to London where I'm gonna park, and then we'll get the uh, tube train. Um, so yeah, I'll probably see you, see you on in there, maybe even when I'm at Wembley Park, uh, and hopefully I'll be meeting after there. But it's a bit of a difficulty getting the timing right on the trains, but we'll do our best. Uh, so yeah, I'll see you uh, in just a bit. So we've arrived at Stanmore Station, now we've got to try and meet laughter. And there's a bus. <laughs> this train's going to Stratford. I love the sound of Jubilee Line trains, to be fair. Got that really nice engine sound when they're pulling away and stopping. So, uh, yeah, I'll catch you in a bit. It's absolutely empty in here. In the second carriage. <laughs> More train stuff out there. Very good, so next time I see you, I shall hopefully be at Wembley Park, which is there. <laughs> uh, three stops, what, four stops if you like, fourth station, where well, hopefully I'll be meeting up with Laughter if I can match up the train with his, so yeah. Hopefully I'll see you then. Right, so I'm at Euston Square, um, we're just waiting for the others now, I think there's been a bit of confusion between uh, which sort of Euston is which, but uh, there is uh, someone over there, <laughs> let me see if I can turn the camera around, hang on, he's filming me so I'll film him, <laughs> there is <laughs> Mr Laughter, <laughs> oh he's not filming me, it's on him, hello Laughter, you alright? <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to find Christopher and all the other lot, so uh, hopefully we'll find them soon. We've been to the coin fair for the first half of it, but it's just going to get something to eat now. Uh, we've got everyone there, you can see Christopher there, and his laughter ahead, and some other, other people as well. So, um, yeah, I'll probably update you afterwards about what coins we've got. Um, do that at the end of the video, but uh, yeah, let's go and get some lunch, and then I'll take you through, well, maybe the coin fair at the end. We found ourselves a Burger King, we've got a burger, and we've got some. Uh, other goodies in there, so yeah, very nice. Laughter, enjoying his drink. How was the coin fair? Um, you know what? I think I'll just leave that bit in. But I can confirm that Laughter did, in fact, actually have a very good time at the coin fair. <laughs> I'll leave that in. As you can see, Lainey has uh, fallen asleep. <laughs> and then this lot are on the phone to Master Temple and Cali, I think, on the phone call. <laughs> so, yeah, we've just finished our drinks. And they're having a great time. But, uh, yeah, I think uh, the day's nearly done, but uh, yeah. Been far too long in the, uh, the pub having drinks, as you can hear, laughter is... Uh, hey, laughter. <laughs> I'm alright. Hey! <laughs> Had a couple of drinks Why and then we got... Uh, <laughs> it will all be bleeped out, don't worry. Um, and uh, yeah, we're about to get the train home. We are escorting Christopher back to the train station <laughs> to make sure he doesn't get lost. <laughs> never get lost. Chaperone. <laughs> Um, and yeah, I'll probably, the next part of the video will be uh, me showing all the coins I've got. Um, so yeah, I will see you uh, in a bit.
Right, so it is the next day and I'm back from the London Coin Fair and I'm just going to show you everything we got and I'll tell you how much I paid for everything and then we'll use the annotations to give you sort of a, a brief idea as to what I paid for everything uh, and you can let me know whether or not you think I got a bargain or not. Uh, so we'll start off uh, with something that isn't a coin that I bought and that is uh, Coins of England and the United Kingdom Decimal Issues uh, Standard Catalogue of British Coins, Spink 2021 now, you've got to buy a book, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Um, obviously, uh, I'm sure you can imagine. You've basically got um, sort of some examples there. Uh, every page of uh, 50p's and things like that, and rough prices and a bit of information and stuff. They're always nice to have, <laughs> more so just sort of almost like collecting the book as opposed to ever actually reading it or using it. But they're certainly interesting to have. Uh, certainly nice to see all the five pound coins and whatever else is on here. I haven't really looked, but I'm sure I'll have a read at some point. Um, and yeah, this cost me five pounds, so I thought uh, it wasn't too too much uh, for a book. Nice picture of Britannia on the front, and uh, some other bits and bobs on the back. So yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, let's get on to the actual coins I bought first of all. Um, well, second of all, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, so the first uh, two coins I bought were. Let's have a look. Is this going to be better without the coin map, perhaps? What colour is the other side? I might just use the black on this side, actually. That will probably be even better, to be fair. So, uh, these two are Falkland Islands, 1987, one pound coins. Um, both the same. There were two of them there. I have put them into my own flips as well. Uh, let's show you the other side. And I paid uh, £1.50 for each of these, so £3 in total, which I thought, again, was not too bad. Slightly more than face value for them seems fairly reasonable to me. Um, so yeah, I'm very pleased with those. Right, staying with the Falkland Island themes, uh, or theme, <laughs> we've also got a 1987 uncirculated penny. Now, whether or not it's brilliant uncirculated or just uncirculated, I don't know. But my assumption is that it is... Um, just uncirculated, maybe from like a sealed bag or something. Zoom in a bit more, which is very nice. And then we've got uh, 2p from the same year, 1987. You'll probably start to notice a pattern here. <laughs> so 2p, I don't know what's on them. Uh, some sort of uh, bird on this one, and then obviously the penguins on the uh, on the penny. Then we've got. The old 5p, the old large 5p from 1987. These are all from 1987. With another bird on it. And the same portrait and obverse design. Then we have the larger 10 pence. With some uh, what looks to be seals on maybe. Or walruses or something like that. Once again the same portrait. Then we have a 20 pence with a sheep on it. Which is very nice. Again, it's weird seeing the 20p's without sort of the uh, the rim, like the edge bit that the UK ones have, but that's pretty cool. We then have the old large style 50 pence with the Warra Fox on, which is very nice. And then finally from that little bit we've got another 1987 pound coin, but obviously in much better condition. And then for all of those, uh, I don't know if I can really show you all of these, but uh, something like that. <laughs> for all of those, what's there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven coins. I paid eighteen pounds. So eighteen pounds for the uncirculated set of uh, 1987 coins from the Falkland Islands, excluding uh, any two-pound coins, obviously. Uh, which I thought again was a pretty good deal. To be fair, you're not going to find that any cheaper anywhere else. I wouldn't have thought. So that's pretty cool. Right, and then next up, we've got a uh, bit of an old penny theme. So this one was actually scouted, shall we say, and uh, recommended to me from Laughter. Go and check out his channel, uh, who was with me, um, as you probably saw throughout the duration. So his link will be in the description. Go and check out his channel. Um, and this one is an old penny from 1826, which is George IV, uh, which is very, very nice. Perhaps... A slight, well, I say rotation error. It's not really a rotation error, but the accuracy, I suppose, of the coins was not as good back then. But it's still very nice. 
Uh, and I paid £6 for this coin. And as I said, information about it will be up there, hopefully. <laughs> um, in terms of mintage figures and things. Um, so yeah, very chuffed with that for £6. I don't think you can go too far wrong with £6. Um, let's have a look. Then we've got... Let's try and get these the right way. So the 1853 one, which is this one. It's a shame about that little mark there, but um, yeah, not in bad condition for 1853. Uh, this penny I paid £18 for. Which again, it's not too bad to be fair, considering it's still got a little bit of shine about it. That's pretty cool. And then the other two was 1855. And this one I paid six pounds for as well. Again, Victoria, and again, there's that side. And likewise, this one, which again is not in bad condition, is 1857. And I paid 16... How much did I pay for this? No, I didn't pay 16. I paid £12. Sorry. <laughs> £12 for this one. Which is pretty cool. Uh, let's have a look. And finally, 1854. I paid £6 for this one as well. Which again, I thought is not too bad. So £6 for most of these and then 12 and 18 respectively. So... It's quite nice. I've got... It's because I already have an 1858 penny, so it's quite nice to have some of the other 1850s. But obviously the goal is to eventually get one from every single year, but it's it's a goal that's kind of almost never supposed to be reached. It's sort of a, an ongoing thing as opposed to something that you can complete overnight. So those are pretty cool. Again, let me know what you think in the description... Uh, in the comments, sorry. Not the description. Um, and then we've got the two, three final coins that are my favourites, my absolute favourites. So first of all we have this one, which is a Magna Carta £2 coin, but I'm sure some of you will be able to guess what type it is. Um, obviously it's the one that I'm missing from the 2015s that has this variation. Um, it is, of course, the IRB version. So if you've ever, ever seen this coin in circulation, you'll know that it just has the JC portrait. But the brilliant uncirculated ones, um, because they were released before the change of portrait actually happened in the UK, they were um, minted with the IRB old portrait so that's pretty cool and I paid £22 for this so I'm very pleased with £22 you're probably not going to get it any cheaper anywhere else so that is pretty cool and then we have what is what, what is in my opinion the biggest bargain of the entire um, weekend is a shield can anyone guess what date it is <laughs> Have a little think, have a little guess. It is a 2018 shield, which of course is not intended for circulation. Uh, very, very rare. Less than 50,000 of these exist. And I paid just £25 for this. So I was well pleased with £25 for a 2018 shield. Is an amazing deal in my opinion. Um, which means that obviously I've just got to get uh, the 10, 11 and 16 ones and then I've got all the other ones. Very, very nice. And then finally we have what is probably my favourite coin out of the whole weekend. Maybe not the best deal, but let's have a look. Um, comes in this little box. Let's zoom out slightly. That's the date on it. <laughs> Let's get this out. It's a little bit worn away, the box. A bit tatty, maybe, but... Oh, well. <laughs> Still got the uh, the Royal Mint case here. And what does that say? Um, XXX Olympiad. Maybe that could be a clue. Again, is that a clue for anyone? <laughs> maybe. But this is... A silver proof Beijing handover from 2008. Oops, let's have a look. Now, before you give judgment of the, the toning that's on it, let me just show you the coin. So yeah, there's a bit of nasty toning going on on there, as you can see, which isn't ideal. But, I mean, the overall feel of the coin is still stunning. Obviously, it's still a silver proof, still a Beijing handover, which is very nice. 
and then we've got a certificate of authenticity here as well which is very nice if you want to have a read of that feel free to pause and have a little read but yes um, for this I paid 30 pounds 30 pounds for the silver proof Beijing handover which you could argue is a lot given the toning but it was actually Christopher that said it uh, very well um, which is you'd rather pay 30 pounds for an already toned one rather than 60 pounds for a clean one and then it just tones anyway so yeah it's kind of I'm not uh, too dissatisfied with it and it's another silver proof for my collection as well which is very nice so yeah um, I think in total that all adds up to 151 pounds um, which is maybe slightly more than I was expecting to spend but I mean I could have spent a lot more if I really wanted to <laughs> there was plenty of stuff that I sort of said no to um, but yeah let's see if I can get everything that I bought uh, in shots so what do you think 151 pounds for all of this stuff I don't think it's necessarily bad um, particularly these two brilliant uncirculated ones um, and then these uncirculated uh, if you don't know what the difference is these ones are actually struck to a higher standard these are actually struck to brilliant uncirculated quality whereas these ones are just uncirculated which means that they are the same standard as normal circulating coins it's just they've been pulled out of circulation whilst they're in really good shiny condition um, but yeah I hope you've enjoyed the vlog and then this coin showcase um, let me know if you think I could have done anything differently uh, I couldn't actually film anything with inside, uh, from within inside the coin fair because photography wasn't allowed um, and I didn't want to kind of be a pain <laughs> to anyone in there um, but yeah it's definitely something I'd recommend definitely something I would do again um, and yeah stay tuned um, for more vlogs like this coming soon I won't announce exactly what kind of trips they're going to be but there are more vlogs on the way more vlogs coming soon so stay tuned for that if you've enjoyed make sure to leave a like down below comment subscribe and I shall see you all later bye bye